Okay, I figured out how to uh, zoom in again. All right. Uh, so today's lesson is the will to win. Um, more battles. Really, this is the uh, this is the rest of the story, except for the for the end. We're going to save the end for tomorrow. Uh, but the uh, the will to win start picks up where we left off with Saratoga. Uh, great victory. People are starting to, uh, or countries are starting to recognize us and want to be our friend and help us out. And um, but the next winter was very, very difficult. I remember how I, I talked about the crossing of Delaware, where it was very cold that the winter. This next winter was even worse. There was blizzard after blizzard, and uh, so they had to when they uh, went to their winter quarters in Valley Forge. It was very, very difficult. They uh, many troops. Uh, just froze, got diseases. It was it wasn't good, um, but part of that help, uh, Baron von Steuben, uh, was a Prussian, or you know, Prussia is in Germany, but back then they called it Prussia, uh, the northern part of Germany today, and uh, the Prussians are very well known as great military warriors, and so this guy comes over and helps out to train the American soldiers. This is very important because they can do guerrilla warfare with, and ambush people, but standing up to the British and fighting the British on their own terms, Americans are not good at that yet. They don't have the discipline, they don't have the training, and so it is very important for Washington to bring over this guy, Baron von Steuben, to train the men into how to fight a more modern, well at least back then, modern uh, way of fighting. Uh, so he trains them how to use the bayonet, how to uh, to maneuver and so forth, and it becomes it it is going to be very handy in the next couple of months. Uh, so when the next year starts, and here's a quote from George Washington, definitely check that out. Um, after that, in 1779, the French start arriving. Marquis de Lafayette is uh, a huge supporter of the revolution. He loves George Washington. He is. Uh, He's his biggest fanboy, and um, so he comes over and he he urges the French to get involved more and more. And uh, the French are sending over weapons. They're sending uh, some troops, but they haven't gotten in the for in the fight yet. And we'll get to that tomorrow. But uh, by then, you know, it's really the Americans just getting support from them, and not the French not totally getting involved. Uh, at least on, in the Americas, they get involved elsewhere and cause problems for co cause problems for the British. But uh, here in America, uh, they're just supporting us. Uh, so the the road heads south. This is where things get a little crazy and nearing the end of the war. Uh, the um, British know that they tried to cut off the New England, didn't work. They tried going in the middle colonies. That didn't work. Uh, they, they found it too difficult. But they felt, remember we talked about the South, was very close to the British. They, uh, they had the same religion. They didn't, they didn't come over here for, to get religious freedom like the other colonies. They're here for economic uh, value. So they, they are closer uh, culturally and religiously to the British. So the British are, are thinking, hey, maybe we can go into the South and pacify the South and, and you know, they'll listen to us. So they go down there thinking that this is going to work, and they walk into an absolute hornet's nest. It is a, a nightmare for the British. They go in and start making deals with, with people, and all they do is unleash uh, tribal warfare, basically. People that have been around uh, for a long time, they've built up a lot of wealth. And they are, you know, superior to everybody. And then the backwoods people that uh, came in later that don't have a lot of wealth and they resent it. it just, everybody just starts fighting. The British don't even know what to do at this point. Uh, but their main goal is to attack and destroy the American Southern Army. And basically what the general, General Green, does is brilliant. He runs away. <laughs> he runs all over the place, making the British chase him, chase him, and chase him. Finally, the uh, the British just get tired, and uh, and they don't have uh, enough weapons, so they go to get resupplied and uh, reinforced at a little place called Yorktown, which we'll get into tomorrow. Uh, Yorktown, Virginia, right over here, is where we're going to be talking about tomorrow. 
but it wasn't. It was because the the uh, the Southern Army uh, had some good victories, you know, definitely. But the main thing they did was uh, try to get away from the British, just wear them down. Um, this is an old term called rope a dope. They basically rope a doped them. They let them punch them and just kept away and never just didn't. All they had to do is not lose, and that's exactly what the American Army did. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out here is loyalists. When the uh, British go into the South, they are looking for loyalists. These are people that stay loyal to the British crown, uh, want to stay in the British uh, Empire, and so they use these loyalists to try to stamp out any rebellion. And it just pits American against American, and it's it turns into a huge mess. It doesn't work. Um, so that's you know. And then we go go into Yorktown. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. Uh, but that's why the uh, British go to Yorktown it, uh, in the place. They are just worn out. They're running out of ammunition. They go here to get resupplied, reinforced, uh, get some rest. And they feel very comfortable being by the coast because, remember, the uh, British Navy is very, very strong. So they feel protected. They can get reinforced by the sea. They can get protection from boats coming down there. So it, it looks like a really good place. Find out tomorrow. That won't be true. Spoiler alert. Um, here's what I really, I would like you to really remember. We got the three American advantages. Number one, the Patriots were defending their own land, home, and families, fighting for their own principles and beliefs. The British soldiers were far from home. Number two, the strong and steady leadership provided by George Washington and his officers inspired Americans. So, uh, leadership is what you want to remember. They had strong leadership. And then finally, support from France gave Americans much needed financial and military help on land and sea. So support from France is number three. So let's see if we can break it down. Uh, Americans, Americans were defending their own land, homes, and families. They're fighting for their principles. Oops. Print, that's not working. Principles and beliefs. Strong leadership is number two. Support from France is number three. All right, that's all I got for you today. Have a great day, and thanks for watching.